It's an alien evasion of our pond, and we're trying to figure out where the little green men are. Watch this. This is cool. Just like gelatin. Slices all up just like that. Oh, she gets so excited. The old fat Jack Russell. Come on, get up. You can do it. Oh, what a good fat dog. Sit down. Let's hook you up. This is just a cool way, if you like black and whites, just to sort of accentuate an area. Just keeping it real simple. But I kind of like it. She's all worried because the sister's at the doctor. The sister had to go to the doctor. Yeah. Here we go again. Another fun storm. Isn't that cool? It goes all the way down to the pond. So, uh, the drain field is working. That is so cool. Kind of a weird video, I guess. I'm stuck here all day. And there's thunder in the background, which means we're going to break this drought that we're in. It's been dry, man. It's been really dry. Today, I, I just have to kill some time. I'm waiting on my generator to show up. Hopefully it does, because I'll bet you we lose power tonight. And you can just feel the energy. Man, you can just, the skies are darkening up. I know we're gonna get another thunderstorm come in. So I just drug the camera around. I talk a little bit about the drought, how I handle getting through this drought, not just with the lawn, but the garden. Talk a little bit about the weed killer I put out here what's going on with this. A couple of updates, just drag, you know, like I said, I can't do anything, I can't go anywhere. They gave me a time frame of 6 a.m. to 8 p.m. for my delivery. I'm like, really, dude, come on. <laughs> it's a trucking company, it's not a normal delivery, so. Anyways, uh, let's go, let's make a video. Morning. Kind of a weird video. It's a uh, cloudy, rainy day for a change. We've been in a horrible drought period for three weeks. And I hate to use the term drought because I know it's not technically everyone is dying drought. This is a just a dr very dry period that we're having to get through. Today, I'm gonna touch on what I do during a drought period. I do things a little bit differently. I'll talk to you about how to buy the right weed killer, how to make some of those choices. And then things that I'm going to be doing out here on this newer lawn, this newly seeded lawn. So here we go. So one of the benefits, people keep asking me why I'm using a cheaper grade seed out here. I'm just going to Lowe's buying uh, cheap Bermuda grass, which is more along the line of a commons called Golden Glove. And the reason being is, is this ground is horrible. It's full of rocks, roots. It's never going to be a real mow. This is just going to be kind of a, we call it a park setting. So we just wanted something, a real tough grass. Common Bermudas are really tough. If you have a rough area like this, it's not like the backyard where we put a lot of blackjack down there, which is a finer Bermuda. Uh, this will, I need something very aggressive to grow into some of these areas. Matter of fact, we still are cutting out cedar stumps over here, but uh, it's coming along good. Now I had a real crabgrass problem out here and I treated for the crabgrass. And then stupid me, I didn't go ahead and just identify the goosegrass right away, but let me show you the difference between the two. So you can see my crabgrass treatment was very effective. That's dead crabgrass. That's, what is that? That looks like dying crabgrass. It's almost hard to see the crabgrass now because a lot of this crab is actually dying right there. So now let me show you the goose which is kind of easy to see. It looks a lot healthier, see that? So when you have that real hard, these are really hard kind of spiky things sticking out. That's a goosegrass, and that's a real tough one to kill. Pre-emergent is the best way. You really got to pre-emergent. You got to do several treatments of pre-emergent and split that up to control this goosegrass next year. But I've got enough of it in here. There's a lot of it in here. Um, I mean, like, look. So look at this, there, there. I mean, this whole area is just full. It's just full of goose, goose grass. So I have to treat it. So, so I'm doing it in two stages. I'm being kind of mild with it. 
So I'm coming out here and spraying it. I'm actually trying Speed Zone EW. I'll put a link to it in the description below. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a link. If you have a certain weed, maybe you have a sedge, maybe you have something, a certain type of weed, I'm going to put a link to a resource center that I always put. And it's, it's actually one that I use. But there's a hidden little section in there. If you follow the link in the description, I'll put a link. And it's sort of a, it's sort of a resource center. And at the top, you'll see a search bar. And all you got to do is put goosegrass in Bermuda. Click the search. And what's going to come up is previous discussions and answers from their experts as far as what. So someone might say, is this, will this kill goosegrass in Bermuda? And the expert will answer it and say, no, it's not labeled for that. But if you use this and you click that link, then you know. Now, before you buy it, there, further down, you're going to see a label. And I want you to read the label and make sure that it's going to work for what you want. That's a great resource. So whenever I have a weed that I'm not really confident about, like with zoysia grass, I might have something growing in it. I'll go over there and I'll put that in and figure out. And that's how I kind of figure out what I'm going to be using. Again, there are two products I bought for this goosegrass. I'm going to start off with that speed zone. And then there's one other one that I'll talk about. So this is why my tree guy is coming by. We've got a total of about... 20, 24 trees, I think. Okay, so for those of you that don't know, we had some pretty severe thunderstorms come through a few days ago. And we lost probably about 20 trees out here. Matt came by with his crew finally. They were just swamped, dude. You could just tell he was stressed out. I mean, he had, they've been working for weeks and weeks doing trees. <laughs> See that big tree right there? That's a big tree right there. Well, its sister was right here. <laughs> And that was blocking a lot of sun back on this new Bermuda lawn over here. And now it's gone. So I really don't have to worry about shade, I don't think. I'm gonna get I'm gonna get a lot of sun back there now. But this tree, I'll put up a piece, I'll put up a clip from when half of it was down. Um, and we looked at it and it already had an old break plus the new break. We said and it was leaning towards the house. I said, and it's gotta go. So we took that down. Now if you're wondering about the stump. Uh, they were about to cut this low and I said hold up. I said leave it like it is Because what I'm gonna do with this This one and the one that's out front. We want to do something cool with it. So I want to cut it down I want to cut it down to about 24 inches or so and I want to get some kind of like big Bird bath or something on here. The deer will drink out of it The birds will use it and then I want to put one out front too. I want to do something like that kind of cool so this is a uh little off the beaten path video because I'm stuck in the house waiting on my delivery of my generator. I thought I'd show you something cool. Now I do a lot of photography. Years ago I did a ton of it, but I want to show you like these are all my prints that I actually put into black and white and printed them off just on a regular printer. You can see these here. We just put them into a frame and actually they actually came up really nice. Just a nice series of black and whites. Now let me show you uh, one of my favorite black and whites. I did that. <laughs> I made that antique. So this is my cow print. So this is, again, one of my prints. And all I do is I bring it into Photoshop and I really reverse out the contrast and I blow up the white. You want to make sure if you're going to do something like this, you want to make sure that the white is really white. Otherwise, that whole thing would look gray. And that's one of the secrets. So bring it into a photo, photo, a photo, some type of photo processing, bump up the contrast, keep the blacks real strong and reverse it up. That's on, that's on canvas. And I'm going to show you a couple more upstairs. So if you're wondering about the renovation here, um, I have the whole thing on video if you haven't seen it, but these stairs, they literally were built out of rough two by four and it looked like a deer stand. I don't know if I could find a piece of footage on them <laughs> and show you. So. During the renovation process, we actually had them all retreaded and put in, uh, and I stained these and finished them. I put in a little bit of molding on the side, but this railing here, we had custom made. They came out, they measured it, they brought it out, they welded it, and then they brought it back to the shop and they finished it off. And so when you come upstairs now, we have a new chandelier, all shiplap up on the ceiling. 
And what I want to show you is I put up some more black and whites on canvas here. That guy is also downstairs, but that's one of my cool prints. He was such a cool guy. I shot him up in North Georgia somewhere. But you might recognize, if you follow my channel, you might recognize this. Uh, a couple weeks ago, I went across the street to my neighbor's there, and she had an old shed from the 1800s. And I took a picture of it and I blew up. Now this is big, this is like 30 by 24. And then I also have this guy over here. Um, just a nice cold stare of black and white. This, so, is just a, this is just a cool way, if you like black and whites, just to sort of accentuate an area. Just keeping it real simple, but I kind of like it. Okay, so this is where it all started. This is where we're seeing them, right there. Look at that, isn't that crazy? What is that? It's an alien invasion of our pond, and we're trying to figure out where the little green men are. Help us ID that. All right, YouTube world, we need your help. <laughs> we want you to identify. I don't have, I don't have my uh, phone with me. But on these branches out here, we have a couple round globs. Well, we found one over here. We thought it was an egg pile, but look at it. Dude, is that sick or what? So I just cut it open in half, and I don't see like animals living in it. So here's the other half. Is that an old, is that an old egg pile? And then the outside looks like this. It's real slimy. Maybe it's some kind of fungus? Watch this, this is cool. Just like gelatin. Slices all up just like that. That's so cool. Very, very cool. So, now that it stopped raining, it's kind of mellowed out. It's actually kind of nice out here, drop down. Well, let's talk about two things. Let's talk about the hazards of putting weed treatments down this time of year. And let's talk about how I handle drought watering. When you're applying a weed treatment, a lot of these weed treatments will tell you not to apply over 90. The reason being is it's gonna stress the grass. You'll probably get some yellowing. You might even get a little bit of burning. Are you gonna kill the Bermuda? No, but you are definitely gonna see, if you do that for most of your weed killers, you're gonna see some stress. It can be done, but you are gonna see some stress. I'm to the point out here where since I'm using a cheap common Bermuda seed and I got plenty of time in the growing season, I really don't care. So I'm actually, I'm okay with stressing this a little bit to get rid of this damn goose, goose grass because <laughs> I want this crap gone. So I've actually come back out and put more seed on top of here just in case I overstress this. I'm just going to keep seeding this and seeding this and seeding this because I bought cheap seed. I can buy a big bag of this uh, Scott's Bermuda Golden Glove down at Lowe's, I don't know, was it 20, 30 bucks or something? I can just come out here and seed every single week, just keep seeding and seeding until it just keeps taking and taking. And eventually this aggressive common Bermuda will take over. Watering, how am I handling when we're, you're gonna have a drought come up, just like we just went through? So the majority of people, the rule of thumb, and especially if you have water restrictions is, you're better off to pick a day and do a heavy watering and drive it down early, early in the morning. You do it early, like 4 a.m. You want to do it early so it has time to infiltrate the soil as much as possible and be taken up by the plant. However, if you're not on a water restriction, you can also do what I do, which is short cycle watering. What is short cycle watering? Short cycle watering is just like we do up in the garden. If I see a plant wilting, suffering from lack of water, I go give it a little bit of water, I come back a couple hours later, the plant's nice and healthy. I'm doing the same thing with my lawn. I'm not trying to keep it green and beautiful, I'm just trying to make it survive. So we go into a survival mode, where I, what I do is I come out here and I do a short cycle watering every single morning. So this whole area runs all at once. I might do a 10 minute run out here. Do a 10 minute run, leave it. Next morning, 10 minute run, leave it. Next minute. So every day I'm giving it a little bit of a drink, a little bit of a drink. <sighs> Driving water all the way down to the roots. Bermuda grass can, established Bermuda, Bermuda grass can easily have 
20 to 36 inch roots. Got it? I mean, really big root systems. So to say you're driving your water all the way down into your root system, I'll disagree with that. It, the ground, the more ground will hold the moisture more, of course. If you do it deeper, do it early in the morning and do it deeper. That's what most of you should do. But if you don't have any restrictions and you don't have a big, huge water bill, then you can come out and do a short cycle water. I really rely on my deep waterings, on my deep waterings with heavy infiltration rates, what we just had. We just had a thunderstorm move in. We had probably a good hour of rain. I guarantee if I go up and check my rain gauge, I'm probably a half to three quarters of an inch of rain, and that's perfect. I save my water, do short cycling, and let Mother Nature do that deep, because I know it's gonna come. I mean, it's gonna come at some point. It may be two weeks, but it's gonna come where I'm gonna get those rains. Fortunately, now that I'm looking at my 10 day forecast, I'm seeing better conditions. I'm seeing more days with a 50% chance or a 30% chance of rain. So that's how I survived this drought period. Um, someone was asking about my drain and I have a video clip coming up, I'll show you. But what we did here, maybe I can find some video of us putting this in. I don't know where it is, to be honest. I gotta find it, but our whole property continually gradually slopes and slopes and slopes and slopes all 40 acres does it just about and so all the water comes in here well what was happening is the water was sort of sheeting down and taking away topsoil and seed and everything else so when we put these raro ties in we initially dug a small channel well water is crazy and it will find a way so it was finding a way so we dug additional channel made it deeper we put in four inch uh, perf PVC and we made sort of a French drain here and man, it would just work perfect. There's no way water can get through this. It's a big trench, gravel, PVC, gravel on top. So every ounce of water that's hitting here is now going down and it's actually running down a little creek that I made. So there's a little creek down here and it goes into a settling point and then it goes into the pond. So guys, use that. Um, if you have a weed problem, make sure you use that resource center on the weeds. If you run into a problem, you might want to try with droughts, you might want to try that short cycle watering. I know a lot of you guys get under water restrictions, which is kind of tough, but if you don't have any water restrictions, you can even do both. Pick one day, do a real heavy water, and then the rest of the day is just do a short cycle, but do it when it's cool. Do it real early, like 3 a.m., 4 a.m. in the morning. That's when you want to water. Set that controller to go off at that time. Anyway, it's just a crazy day. I'm still waiting on a damn generator. Uh, I'll give you some updates. I got a bunch of videos coming out. Got it.